For many, it is the race, the most famous and most compelling driving spectacle of them all. It's May in Monte Carlo, and that means the Monaco Grand Prix. Hello there. Well, we arrived in the Principality wondering if Michael Schumacher could break Nigel Mansell's all-time record and win the first six Grand Prix of the season. In the practice sessions, Schumacher's Ferrari was just about the quickest of the lot, until qualifying, that is, when he was pushed down the grid by the flying Renaults and the BAR of her own Jensen Button. He's the modern Mr. Monaco with five wins under his belt, but Michael Schumacher has to go out early in the crucial session after struggling for grip in pre-qualifying. He's a long way off his target and knows the track will speed up for his challengers. Renault say, watch us go next year, but they're enjoying a great season. Jarno Trulli gets quicker and quicker. He's top man through the last two sectors, the only one to break 114. Teammate Fernando Alonso says the car's handling beautifully. He drops time in the middle of the lap, but starts in a great position. Now, Jensen Button missed last year's Monaco after a horrible crash exiting the tunnel. He shows immense courage and skill to split the Renaults and start from the front row. It's the race everyone wants to win. Jensen Button's in position for his first Grand Prix triumph. So the Berkshire-based Italian truly the pole sitter. He's never been there before. Button in a Renault sandwich. Those Renaults are brilliant starters. The top three all on Michelins. Then Michael Schumacher. Only three drivers in 50 years have won from fourth on the Monaco grid. Raikkonen, just one point for him all season. Birthday boy Barrichello, 32 today. Sato in the second BAR. He hit a curb. That cost him. Best of the season for Coulthard's McLaren. Worst in 18 races, though, for last year's winner, Montoya. Fisichella's a Monaco specialist. Weber's in the spare Jaguar after a series of failures. Ralph Schumacher was actually second to Trulli, but he's demoted 10 places after an engine change on Thursday. A problem before the start, Olivier Panis stalls the Toyota at the end of the formation lap. Very embarrassing for a former winner. The 37-year-old Frenchman starts from the pit lane. Enjoy the best of an action-packed Monaco Grand Prix with Martin Brundle and James Allen. They're lining up now, Ralph Schumacher in position below us. We're looking at the point of view of Michael Schumacher, world champion. Those are the three cars he needs to beat this afternoon. Can he come through? Can Trulli keep his nerve? We'll find out in a second. Go! Great start by both of the Renaults, and Buttons fighting a rearguard action. Once again, the Renaults in Lecture got the start line. Look at Sartre around the outside, and Raikkonen as well. Schumacher's lost ground and part of his nose, I think. I Certainly one of the Ferraris has had some damage. Yeah, Sartre with a brilliant uh, start. I think it was a, a piece of Raikkonen's nose. There's a Minardi in the background that's broken down on the exit of the first corner. It's a Renault 1-2, and a BAR. 3-4 at the moment, and Sato just up behind his team. A brilliant start from him. Raikkonen in fifth. Michael Schumacher down to sixth then. Uh, you can see the two Ferraris there. Coulthard cool just behind them. So as I said, I think it was a pivotal part of the race. If Michael gets backed into some traffic, his work is going to be doubly hard this afternoon. Sato then up from seventh place to fourth. Made three places at the start. Absolutely stunning. And we'll have to wait and see, because quite a few bits of carbon fibre seem to be coming off the uh, somebody's front wing it looked like it had red on it so that's what made me think it was ferrari we'll find out that's clear he's gone off where's he gone off anyway oh it's at the lowe's hairpin let's have a look yeah where is he oh he's lost his nose up at the top for some reason and uh, then he toboggans down on it. it's wedged underneath his right front wheel so he just skidded down he had a problem at the top of the hill and fell down really truly needs then alonso second button third fourth sato fifth raikkonen sixth michael schumacher seventh rubens barrichello eight david coulthard ninth juan montoya tenth Mark Webber, that's the top 10 at the moment. You can see 11th Fisichella, 12th to matter. But what about this for a start? We've got Trulli, Alonso, Button, Sato and Raikkonen all ahead of the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher, who's gone back two places at the start. Well, let's see now. I mean, we know uh, the yellow flags are waving because Kleans at the bottom of the hill. And uh, both BARs have got some puffs of smoke coming out of the back. I hope it's... What is that? Mark, don't stand there, for goodness sake. He just, he thinks, he thinks they're going to see him and just move out of the way. If they lock a wheel, they'll just wipe him out. Not the place to stand, my friend, but he's got away with it on this lap. He saw Clean come down there, tobogganing down out of control. Anybody else can do the same thing. 
but I think the VARs are just hitting the ground quite hard. And there is Sato defending heavily against Kimi Raikkonen. Michael Schumacher trying to make something of it and foul there. That's what I'm talking about. There's something smoking on the back of uh, Sato's Honda engine or, or something touching at the back end. Sato then, has he got a problem? I wonder. Certainly he appears to be uh, beginning a train here, doesn't he, behind him whilst the two Renaults and Button pull away at the moment. Sato, three seconds behind the race leader at the end of the, of the previous lap. This is the end of lap three. And that's gone out to 6.3. So Schumacher and Raikkonen lost three seconds to the race leaders just in that lap alone. Yeah, this is uh, exactly what we were talking about. If, the, if Michael got backed up, it was going to wreck his afternoon. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. There's nowhere to overtake around here. They're going to be looking at that smoke of Sato, hoping he expires soon. But yeah, is it just an overfill of oil, or does he have the beginning of a serious gremlin there? But at the moment, he's running fine, if not particularly fast. The gap to his teammate, four seconds already. But when you go defensive around here, you lose bucket loads of time well remember Enrique Bernoldi a few years ago in the arrows held up David Coulthard legitimately they were battling for position Coulthard was unlucky with his start for 45 laps of the Grand Prix completely ruined Coulthard's afternoon and I just wonder whether something similar isn't happening to Raikkonen and Schumacher at the moment they must be thinking the same thing not least getting dobs of oil all over their visors and that's the answer the Honda engine let's go of Takuma Sato that has happened before this year in Grand Prix, and that's a warning sign for Jensen Button, his teammate. Oh, we've got a crash, a big one. It's a, uh, it's a. Well, I don't know who that is, but it's uh, that's a big impact with the uh, Armco barrier. Is that a Renault upside down in there? We got a, uh, we got cars everywhere. Uh, somebody's uh, been clipped and gone upside down. Presumably, it's because uh, came into a load of smoke there. They'll have to red flag it. They've safe. They've, yeah. There's a red flag hanging out and a safety car board. Which one is it, my friends? You can't have both. They pulled the red flag in, I think. That was something we've seen in the past. Uh, occasionally, marshals decide to uh, stick the red flags out. We think it was uh, Fizikella, whose car is upside down. Yep. Indeed, it was Fizikella out of the car. I tipped the Tyrrell over there once. It's a bit scary, but you get away with it. And it's Coulthard making a stop then early on. They're using the safety car to uh, uh, for some uh, fuel. So there's, B there's the BAR. Uh, we're going to see that blowing up now, I think, on the exit of Tabak. And uh, that is probably where Fisichella had his problem. Look, it's like going through fog on the M1. Now we're going to see it from the back of Sato's car. It's going to lunch itself on the way to Tabak. And uh, all the way in then, that is what Raikkonen's trying to drive through. And what happens then? Let's keep an eye out. Fisichella's going to come in and find some cars slowing down, I would imagine. Let's have a look. What? Uh, oh, there he goes, right over the back of a McLaren of Coulthard. Coulthard with no rear wing then. Fisichella just didn't slow down. And he'd been going into that corner at 90 miles an hour. So that's quite a, might not sound very fast in Grand Prix racing terms, but 90 miles an hour is quick enough. And that's pretty much the worst place. Well, anywhere in Monaco, really, with such confined areas. That's pretty much the worst place it could have blown up. Ted, what can you tell us? Yeah, I'm down at uh, McLaren. David Coulthard's car, they cannot repair it. Sometimes if they have enough time, they can remove and replace the rear wing. But also this bodywork is because the car's completely wrecked. David Coulthard out of the car, very angry, I must say. Williams have also stopped. I think there are some other damaged cars out there, though. They're going to have to make pit stops soon. Yeah, yeah, that was a big, big impact, and uh, clearly Fisichella hadn't worked out that, well, how would you, really? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a cartoon, these marshals today. They're all over the racetrack when they really shouldn't be. Red flag went out, came back in again, and, uh, well, who else pitted? Uh, Heidfeld is in the pits too. Are they using it for refueling or did he simply uh, have a problem now watch out for Sato he's just catapulted between the lot of them somehow squeezed past Barrichello's Ferrari and then tries to go down the outside of his teammate into turn one there he goes just the perfect start he bounced <laughs> Michael clean out of the way <laughs> you don't see that very often watch carefully Sato on the left Schumacher get out of the way uh, Sato was lucky he didn't uh, end up upside down there he just about got away with that and Michael did well too End car from Michael, he's starting to close the line, boom. Slow away, wasn't and, he, Michael? Uh, lucky, I mean, they always build that Ferrari strong. And uh, very lucky with that kind of impact. And there's Sato trying to have his teammate. Now, a bit of bodywork drops over. It is, I'm sure it's Raikkonen's bodywork. Probably his front wing end fence or something. 
Here we see it again. Let's look down at the McLaren, see if he loses a piece on the buttons. Now oh, we miss it in there. Or was it the bollard from the inside? Well, I think it's the bollard from the inside of the corner that got spat out at the front of Raikkonen's car, and then a Minardi parked uh, in the uh, middle. So pretty electric start from Mr. Sato. There's David Coulthard, who's a spectator for the rest of the Grand Prix. In comes the safety car. We'll be green flag racing in Monaco. This is the end of lap seven of 77. And, uh, well, you saw Trulli pulling out a big lead earlier on. Michael Schumacher being held up three seconds a lap by Sato. The race has restarted. We're looking at the wrong cars. Now we're looking at the right ones. The two Renaults once again make a bolt for it. Green flag around the track. There is Schumacher at the bottom of the hill. Two Renaults. But Raikkonen, Schumacher, the top five, going up the hill into the Massenet, Casino Square, looking back now from Jano Trulli. Well, if they can make the break again, and uh, still then it's Raikkonen that's in front of Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello, who could be the spoiler. Uh, if these two Renaults get away, James, let's both get off the fence. Alonso or Trulli, which one's going to win it? Well, bearing in mind that we don't know what their pitch strategies are, we believe they're both going to pit around about lap 15 to 18, something along those lines. Button, we think, is in the same sort of zone. Michael Schumacher, perhaps a lap or two longer. Certainly, tactics will come to play. We're going to see a long middle stint of this race. You have to say, my gut feeling is that Alonso's stronger over the whole race, race distance, but Trulli is just so motivated here this afternoon. He is, but I think Alonso, uh, to not give the politicians answer there, I think Alonso is definitely going to... Uh, would, would win it in a straight fight, but let's see, I agree with you on that one. So then, there are the Ferraris. Barrichello getting dropped a little bit there, in fact, uh, quite dramatically. What's that all about? What it is all about is Montoya nailing him into San Devot. Well, Barrichello losing a place. The fastest man last time around was this man, our man, Jensen Button. He did a 116-1, the two Renaults are 116-3, and behind them a 16-7 for Raikkonen and Michael Schumacher, who is absolutely dropping Montoya for dead now. Bidding to become the first Englishman to win this Grand Prix since the late 1960s, Graham Hill. Nigel Mansell couldn't do it here at Monaco. Damon Hill could never do it here at Monaco. Despite all the Grand Prix that they won, they were always jinxed around this place. And Jensen Button, who lives here, is very, very keen to put that right. Truly, really fast. He's got. He just looks like he's got a better car. <laughs> Having tipped Alonso, and truly has definitely got the better car. Montoya. That's a very early stop, James. Uh, so first stop of the afternoon at the end of lap 13. Truly's put in a blinder, and a very, very. If that was a genuine need for fuel, then it made his qualifying performance look even worse. Looks like we've got another retiree of. Pantano, so uh, 14 runners now then, just the 14 with Weber out of the Grand Prix 2. Button then comes into the pits, the first of the front runners on lap 18. Just as Jano truly puts in a 115.5, and so truly getting on it. And this is bad news that Jensen really is the first of the main contenders to stop. Raikkonen carries on, as does Michael Schumacher behind him. The two Renaults are out front, so now Jensen needs a great outlap because he really has blinked first of the main contenders this afternoon. And into the pits comes Kimi Raikkonen. Now, let's watch Michael Schumacher then. He's got some clear air in front of him. He has to do something pretty special now because Renault have picked up the pace. Both drivers in the low wind, uh, 1 minute 15. Raikkonen also pitting relatively early. That would have been a net 17 had he not had the safety car period. Now, it's absolutely critical that uh, Jensen Button gets past him. I think he has because Jensen Button's outlap has been absolutely stunning. 117.7. That's very, very quick for his first flying lap out of the pits by the BAR driver, so he's comfortably back out in front of Kimi Raikkonen. Yes, he will be, and uh, will that put him in touch? He was 2.2 seconds adrift of Alonso when he made his stop. We haven't seen the Renaults in yet. They are truly flying as well, excuse the pun, but it's uh, they're on lap 20 then, and they're still pumping in the low 1 minute 15s. This is a crucial part of the Grand Prix. 
and they're on very hot laps too. They're really driving this nicely. Just a couple of seconds between the two Renaults. Enjoy this stage of the Grand Prix. A master at work. These are brilliant laps that Michael Schumacher is putting in. His car's not really fast enough to win this Grand Prix straight this afternoon. But he is absolutely driving the wheels of it and he's going to bring himself right into contention. A 14 for a new lap record then for Michael. Uh, when I say it's not fast, I, I think the Renaults have got just a, a better raw pace in the middle part of the lap. Michael's just driving the wheels of it. They've got to respond to Matter Pitt and hopefully releases then Jensen Button. Yeah, very good news for Jensen Button, whose last lap was almost two seconds slower than Michael Schumacher. Schumacher did a 14-4, Button a 16-2. It could well have cost him his net third place in this Grand Prix. Schumacher at the moment in third place then. Truly Alonso Schumacher, as we look at uh, Ralph Schumacher, who's down in 12th place. He had a very good qualifying yesterday, did Ralph Schumacher, but uh, having changed an engine, on Thursday after practice, he had to lose 10 places on the grid under the new rules for 2004, and that's ruined his Grand Prix weekend. Yeah, and he's lapping very slowly, so I suspect Ralph Schumacher got caught up in that physical occultard shunt at the, uh, in the early start. Truly pits from the lead then, important part of the Grand Prix. At the end of lap 23, Michael Schumacher was just 8.6 seconds adrift. Don't think Michael's going to take the lead here, but he could easily move up to third place. Away, looked a solid stop. Well, it would be, because the Renault team, if it's all been measured, and they are the fastest pit stops of the year so far, they've got everything very well drilled and well oiled of the Renault team, and a highly motivated Jarno Trulli rejoins the racetrack at saint devot Alonso, then, is the new race leader. He has yet to make a stop. Michael Schumacher hasn't stopped either. And uh, Schumacher not quite so quick on this lap, Martin. His pace is dropping off slightly. It's only relative, I know, but uh, he's, we've seen him lap after lap after lap, setting new lap, fastest laps for the race. But uh, he, one wonders whether perhaps he's got a little traffic now to deal with. Well, he's still doing enough. He's, uh, you could see uh, where he was. Uh, it got a, a sight of the back of uh, Alonso when we saw them earlier on. That's truly we're looking at at the moment in uh, the Renault. He's pitted and come back out into uh, third place. I think Jensen Button lost out badly in all of that with traffic. The, uh, the key thing now is how close will Michael be to the Renaults after his stop? And uh, Alonso pits then, so Michael, Ted is down there. Yes, Fernando Alonso comes in. Unfortunate, I don't think he's racing Jensen Button. I think Button's only racing Michael Schumacher anymore. There's a little problem on the left rear, but all the tyres are off, all the new ones are on. Let's have a look. That's longer, Phil, than truly. Still a very good stop by the Renault boys. Wow, that's so slick. It's like clockwork, isn't it? And you can see he came in behind the Toyota and he leaves in front of it. Good that night. Game, set, and match. And that was important too. Truly goes through to lead. You just saw him flash through your picture. There's Alonso. They'll be one too. The key thing, uh, Michael. Well, yes, you're right, James. Pointed out. Michael is leading because he hasn't pitted yet. But the key thing for me is when Michael does pit, does he come out in front of or behind Jensen Button? Surely, I'm sure he's going to be ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. If Schumacher stops any time now, it's going to be very, very close indeed. Whether he gets back out in front. I can see the Ferrari Kim Mechanics just in the top of your screen there. Ready for Michael Schumacher, I think. Is he coming in this time? Yes, he is. OK, Button's got a push now if he wants this. Hopefully the team will have radioed him. It's going to be very tight on the exit here. I wonder if they'll even just short fill him a little bit uh, on this one, James, to give him track position. Fill him no more, absolutely no more than they have to. There are the Renaults. They'll be uh, going through one and two. Michael's away, though, isn't he? He's away already. Pit lane speed limit is going to hold him back. One Renault goes past into the lead. The second one surely will make it too, but only just. And where is Button? Button's behind. He has indeed got through. Michael, I'm sure, has got ahead of Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen. There's Jensen at the bottom of the hill. That is why Michael's laps are so brilliant. He's leaped from a couple of key drivers. Now he's got clear sight of Renault, and they'll all be shaking in their boots. Jarno Trulli leading Fernando Alonso. Nick Heidfeld there battling with Juan Montoya, and uh, looks like Montoya has got past him. Those two have been having a ding-dong for the last couple of laps. That's the battle for uh, seventh and eighth places. Heidfeld having pitted under the safety car, and here's another look at uh, what happened. Yeah, Heidfeld got out of shape into the top Mirabeau corner, and uh, it was an easy pass in the end, but Montoya really been working hard to get past 
what was a seventh place man Heidfeld and Ted has news for us on Kimi Raikkonen down at McLaren Kimi Raikkonen has retired he's out of the Monaco Grand Prix the team saw something on the telemetry something was not right and when he came in they were paying attention to the rear of the car there was a lot of heat smoke coming out of the back I don't want to say it's engine if I don't know and we don't know at this moment but it's going to be either engine or gearbox still a lot of heat coming out of the back of that car smoke in the garage but that's it another retirement for Kimi Raikkonen Louise is down in the garage with poor old David Coulthard, who uh, was involved, hit very hard at the back by uh, Fisichella. How's he feeling, Lou? I don't suppose he's feeling too happy, James, but let's ask the man himself. David, not much he could do about that, really, was there? No, it was just an unfortunate situation, but I have to say, Sato was smoking on the way to the, uh, on the parade lap. He also jumped the start by a mile, absolutely no question, because I almost went with him when he moved. So I'm very surprised there wasn't something there, and he continued to smoke. So I know you, it's not normally a policy to retire a car until there's a problem, but you can see that the team have retired Kimi because they can see eventually the engine is going to blow. The consequences of that round Monaco are pretty dire, and you can see there with uh, zero visibility behind Sato's blow-up, it was very dangerous for the cars. So I think it's uh, just an example of Barr being a young team, and um, you know they're, they're growing, they're doing a great job in terms of performance, but. Sometimes you just need to say, look, we can see on the data the engine isn't going to make it, and uh, we were all very lucky today not to have a serious accident. Were you surprised at the speed that uh, Fisichella came into the back of you at? Yeah, I couldn't see anything in the smoke, you know. I, I was uh, thinking of that Days of Thunder movie where they say, go high and all that sort of thing, but I actually thought the blow-up would be on the right-hand side, but as you can see on the screen now, if I kept going on the right-hand side, that's where Sato would stop. You couldn't see anything, so I think Fizzy just took too big a risk. And uh, it's, you know, it's obviously very disappointing. I, I love this circuit, and it, it was. Whoa! Well, sorry to interrupt you. We've got Fernando Alonso, it. who's gone off. It looks like he's come out of the tunnel backwards, and a very big impact for the Renault driver. Second place, Fernando Alonso. And uh, safety car is out. All. Safety car on the track. Alonso's dropped it on the exit of the tunnel. I wonder if he clipped that curb under braking. That is so odd for him to have. No, look, let's watch this. Oh, he's gone offline, passing a car in the tunnel, got on the marbles and straight in the wall. So he's had his accident in the middle of the tunnel, lapping the Williams. And I have to say, that's a pretty inexperienced thing to do, to try to go round the outside of somebody in the tunnel. It's always going to be filthy dirty out there. And uh, he's, look, he's having his accident and still giving the Williams driver the bird. Amazing. <laughs> well, that's an indication of how angry he is. Into the pitch then comes Jensen Button this is uh, out of the pits in fact uh, playing a tactical game then he's made a quick pit stop presumably his last one of the day and there's quite a bit of debris here to be cleared up and that's dropped Button uh, a long way back behind Michael Schumacher but uh, there Alonso clearly unhappy with Ralph Schumacher well maybe he was holding him up earlier on in the race and uh, I, I don't know if Alonso lost his head or maybe thought hey one brother's helping the other here but you do not go around the outside of somebody in the tunnel not maybe once never would you attempt to do that just explain what you mean about the marbles and stuff on the outside well, of the just all the rubbish and debris and the uh, obviously they have very high tire wear as uh, truly the leader pits very high tire wear and uh, all those bits of rubber get flicked off particularly in the high speed areas and it just congregates on the outside of the racetrack and away he goes then so uh, now and uh, that's extra bad news for Jano truly now he doesn't have a rear gunman at all to fend off Michael Schumacher who has gone through did not pit under the safety car Michael Schumacher and he leads the Grand Prix here in Monaco there you can see they picked up now finally the um, they picked up the safety car and it looks like there's one car between Trulli and Michael Schumacher yeah and I, I think I think uh, Ferrari will feel they've made a mistake there because he got so quickly picked up by the safety car, truly he's pitted and had a, 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 a net loss of nothing. Virtually, he'll be straight with him. And look, it's there. you can see the rubbish I'm talking about on the outside of the racetrack, and he's going to have an almighty shunt. It wasn't that it spun, it just understeered clean off into the wall, and I can tell you that's pretty scary at 180 miles an hour. Now watch this. He's still a long way from finishing his... Uh, his lap and he's saying that's the last time you're going to do that to me my friend but I'm afraid you shouldn't have done that he, he'll feel though having said that I need to watch that again did Ralph lift 
in the tunnel because that's also pretty stupid unless of course he's got a gear shift problem well he certainly braked pretty quickly after Alonso hit the wall Ralph Schumacher knocked all the speed off that car a very angry Alonso retires that's the order still a lot of racing to go here in Monaco <laughs> I think this has worked out very nicely for Jarno, truly, even though he doesn't have track position right now, Ted. This is bad news for Michael Schumacher's strategy. He wasn't in his pit stop window, Martin. He's been forced to stay out. This could really hurt him. But quits in, he'll, he'll try and streak away at the getaway, at the restart, try and get some distance on Jensen. But Jensen doesn't have to stop again. Of course, he did stop under the safety car. Yeah, and uh, I, I think I think fuel windows go out of the window when there's a safety car like this, and the safety car period. Oh, hang on, this is Michael Schumacher. Michael Schumacher has had an incident in the tunnel, has hit the wall and has knocked off his left front wheel, and Michael Schumacher is out of the Monaco Grand Prix. What on earth happened there? We're not even racing. It's a big impact too. Has he been trying to warm his tyres up? The safety car was in this lap, we know. Michael's been trying to get some heat in the tyres and brakes. And uh, a big impact with the front of... Was that another car he passed down there Looked too? Like it. it was uh, probably Fisichella's car. They pulled back, is it? I don't know. Yeah, uh, Alonso, maybe Alonso's Renault. But uh, the race is underway then. Michael Schumacher, I'm absolutely sure, will be out of the race for that one with the uh, damage to the front suspension. Well, I, well, hopefully they've got it somewhere on the tape, but we can see what on earth went on. Did he get caught up in some debris in the tunnel from Alonso's incident? Schumacher then, with an error, getting ready to restart the race. Here we go, and there's the safety car, and Michael's, Michael's locked up his left front and squeezed somebody against the barrier who spins him out. Montoya was going for it, didn't realise that the Mercedes uh, car had slowed down and caught Michael Schumacher, who spears off into the wall that Alonso has recently scarred anyway. That was triggered by Montoya. Well, what a bizarre incident. Absolutely extraordinary. You saw Michael Schumacher locking up his, uh, his brakes there. So clearly, the, um, the, whatever the safety car was doing, it caught Schumacher by surprise. Maybe he put a little squirt on and then he hit the brakes. I mean, Montoya... <laughs> Michael, Michael was on the brakes when Montoya hit him. Here we Look. go again, and uh, Michael's trying to warm the tyres up. He then backs off. The safety car's gone quite slow then. Michael's really having to slow down. Montoya just couldn't do anything. It was Montoya, I think. Couldn't do anything about it, and he just was carrying too much speed. And there you see it all happening behind the safety car. Not a lot Michael could do about that. They all got sucked into pushing in the tunnel, and it's... The camera, the camera sees better in there than the human eye. Michael Schumacher then in the pits, Ted. Yeah, Michael, absolutely furious. Talking to his engineer, Chris Dyer, all the Williams guys were standing outside their garage, almost willing him to come on, saying, come on, come down if you want to have a word with us, come down. But uh, Michael staying cool. Jean Tot now getting in there. I'm sure Jean Tot will have words with Williams because that is very unfortunate. Helmet off. The run comes to an end for Michael Schumacher then. So both incidents involving the two Williams drivers, Alonso's incident involving Ralph Schumacher in the tunnel, and just a couple of laps later, under the safety car, the Williams of Juan Montoya involved in this incident with Michael Schumacher. <laughs> I think that was Michael's helmet hitting the wall. Well, what a race this is turning out to be. We were writing off the chances of uh, Rubens Barrichello about half an hour ago. 40 seconds down on the race leader he was. Now, he's only made one pit stop compared to the two of Trulli and Button, but he's only eight seconds behind the race leader in the sole remaining Ferrari and 3.4 behind Jensen Button. A great opportunity then for Jarno Trulli and Jensen Button to win their first Grand Prix, but opportunity well and truly knocked for Michael Schumacher, and that's one angry man making his way back to the paddock and Ted has some news for us at Williams. Yeah, Montoya's been on the radio to explain his side. He sounded almost apologetic, I'm told, from the team. He didn't understand what Michael was doing. Apparently, Michael just stood on the brakes to try and get some temperature into them. And Montoya just plain didn't see him, tried to avoid him, but of course, the Mercedes safety car was in there and Michael sort of tripped over that and Montoya just went straight into him, almost sounded sorry. So one remaining Ferrari then, Michael Schumacher out of the Grand Prix. He will not be beating 
Nigel Mansell's. He's matched it, but he will not be beating Mansell's record of uh, five, of uh, well, making it six consecutive wins. Arakano Pitts from third. He's way ahead of Montoya, who's fourth. Montoya lapping about the same speed as Trulian Button now, so he's he's obviously uh, had no damage with that collision with Michael. Most of Michael's damage was done against the wall rather than against Montoya. But Jensen Button has just taken six tenths, ten percent out of the lead of uh, Yano Trulli. He's now down to 5.5 behind. Jensen's on a charge. Hopefully we'll follow it soon. And you'd have to say that Patrick Head and Frank Williams sitting down there in the Williams garage will be looking at Montoya's pace and saying, hang on a second. This is lap 56, the Monaco Grand Prix. We've got a car that's on the same pace as the race leaders. Why aren't we leading the race ourselves? What's gone wrong with us this weekend that Montoya and Ralph Schumacher qualified 9th and 12th? They just haven't been really in it at all, and yet the car seems to have plenty of speed in it. Obviously not at the right times when it really matters is the answer to that. Yep, Montoya flying then, truly. Lapping now in the 1 minute 16s. He's almost seems to have backed off. He was able to do 1 minute 15s earlier on. And there's a lot of debris. Here you're going to see a replay of uh, the incident. Michael Schumacher with his left front locked. He is actually a long way behind that safety car from that angle. So is Michael giving himself some brake warming up in the tunnel. Now that is not actually very smart, is it? I, I, I don't know about the distances, the relative distances. I wondered if that Mercedes slowed down the uh, pace car, but actually it looks more like Michael was trying to warm his brakes up in the tunnel. If so, he doesn't have a word to say to Juan Pablo Montoya. It's between Jano Trulli in the Renault and Jensen Button. Here he is in the BAR Honda with 16 laps to go. Which one of these two men is going to win their first Formula One Grand Prix here this afternoon? Button just 4.8 seconds adrift now. Took six tenths out of Truly on the previous lap, pushing like crazy is now. Truly's got it's much easier to chase and be chased, isn't it? I notice Yano Truly is uh, short shifting the engine as well, just uh, knocking a few revs off between each gear shift, looking after the car. Let's assume that uh, in the panic of the safety car situation, that BAR and Renault both got the correct amount of fuel in. To, uh, to get them to the end of the Grand Prix. Ted is down in the pits with Jock Clear from BAR. Yeah, down here with, uh, well, he's just gone off the radio, actually, but he's, Jock Clear's been in and out of the Williams garage. Jock, what are you doing in there? Well, obviously, uh, at the moment, we've got Montoya between us and Truly. Montoya's not in a fight with anybody. It won't, it won't cost him much to just let us go as soon as he sees us in his mirrors. We can't afford to get stuck behind him, even for half a lap. We have got a bit of... We've got a bit of performance on Truly, and we've got a bit more to come from the engine, and we want to be able to use it with Truly, not use it with Montoya. Well, you really think Jensen's got a chance of actually passing Truly on the track? Uh, probably not, but we have got a chance of putting pressure on Truly, and we see Alonso made a mistake, and Truly is going to make a mistake as well, only if we pressure him. Well, you got what you wanted, Jock, because uh, the Williams has just pulled right out of the way, and Montoya lets through the man who he replaced at the Williams team a couple of years ago. Back in 2001, in fact, and Jensen Button now free to attack Jarno Trulli. But again, then, Trulli losing time in the slow section. No, he's Ooh. not going to turn in in front of you, for goodness sake. That's Heidfeld in the Jordan, running in seventh place at the moment. Obviously didn't see the, the wave blue flags. Hopefully he's seen him now. He's still in front of Trulli, and Trulli's going to have to try and pass him in the tunnel. Well, we know what happens if you try that. He's got past him already. There's Jensen Button now, and Button has really closed the gap to the race leader thanks to this traffic. He's now going to get past the Toyota and the Jordan, and this isn't an easy part of the racetrack to do it. Get out of the way, he'll be screaming in his helmet. Yeah, and he's got to keep a cool head. It's, uh, it's, this is the moment. I've crashed in a Grand Prix before now where you start, your focus goes on them and your anger instead of the piece of racetrack that you're on. Heidfeld appears to have been in everybody's way today, doesn't he? with the Jordan and still he's trying to keep it on the racing line and still threaten to turn in on Jensen but nonetheless where's it going to shake out in terms of lap time he's still I think is going to have the gap down to a bit over three seconds where is it 3.5 then so he's moving in yes he gained six tenths of a second that's all he managed to get as a result of that flapping Priatori for making his feelings clear about the traffic well this is definitely the shot in the arm Formula One needed Michael Schumacher dominating the season so far. Five Grand Prix victories from five Grand Prix, but he's not going to win here this afternoon. He's out of the Grand Prix. 
and one of these two men is truly metronomic on his pace he really has been super consistent and uh, banishing all criticisms <laughs> praying praying for the laps to just evaporate that's where you've got to remember that the mechanics are just as competitive as the drivers they have to have a different role at grand prix and uh, they they need this just as much as uh, and this is the unusual thing about the new monaco layer if you saw our track guide for the qualifying show is uh the uh, team bosses are sort of up in a unit nowhere near the racetrack it's slightly odd in terms of they don't look over into the pit lane or the exit end of the lap either very strange situation that's why they're appearing to be indoors there the button had slipped the tent on the last lap this is currently a 10th up but that's all he can do is ralph schumacher becomes the 11th retirement of the race putting panis up into eight baumgartner ninth with the minardi truly just one lap away from becoming a winner <laughs> jensen button hasn't given up yet into sandevot 60 miles an hour then as they go up the hill the famous hill been in use here since the 1920s when a man called Anthony Noakes decided it would be a good idea to let Grand Prix cars loose on the streets of the world this famous principality tax haven for the rich and famous back marker ahead but I don't necessarily think it's going to come into play but there is a back marker and uh, really Jensen's just fallen back now into Trudy's place indeed the Minardi is there will he see them coming he's going to be in the tunnel as they approach him so it's still a critical moment for the two leaders as they head into the darkness and the wilderness of that tunnel where are they going to meet the minardi and it is after the exit the last lap of the grand prix and geez, the minardi's in the way of jensen button any chance he had of going and getting him has now gone and button signals to minardi it's not really his fault it's very unfortunate where he caught him i don't think button could have done anything much and that probably has handed the initiative to Jano Trulli the final part of the swimming pool button's throwing everything caution to the wind now he's not going to try a lunge down the Raskas he can't he's too far away Trulli comes out of Anthony Noakes he's going to see the man with the checkered flag and Jano Trulli is going to win his first ever Formula One Grand Prix there is the checkered flag and in the end button was just four tenths of a second behind him a brilliant race and the perfect weekend for Jarno Trulli. First pole and first win of his career at the most glamorous Grand Prix of them all. We'll be joined by David Coulthard to review those very controversial incidents involving both Schumachers in the tunnel. You're back with us uh, in Monte Carlo. Jarno Trulli has won the Monaco Grand Prix. Another unfortunate weekend in the season for McLaren and for David Coulthard. Um, David, first of all, tell us, uh, tell us about your race. Tell us, because it ended, ended pretty abruptly, didn't it? And we cut short your interview a little bit during the race. You were rather upset by what happened there. Well, obviously I was disappointed because I, I love the challenge of driving around Monte Carlo. It's, it's fantastic. And I felt very comfortable with uh, conserving my tyres. Uh, I was a little bit frustrated because you could see that uh, Sato's engine was smoking from the parade lap. You know, our team retired Kimi when they knew he had an engine problem because it's just too risky to allow a car to run and blow up on the track. You know, you put oil down or, as you saw there, the track was just completely covered in smoke. You made a point, perhaps, there, that BAR, a young side, uh, a, a young outfit, mm. very, very keen to win, that if they'd have been rather more pragmatic, they'd have seen that and pulled, it, pulled uh, Sato out earlier. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'm not making any friends uh, there, which is not at all the intention. It's, it's an absolute you, professional, you, yeah, professional observation. Uh, our team has retired Kimi because they knew his engine was going to blow up. Uh, if the Honda engineers knew their engine was, was experiencing difficulties, I think it's the only professional thing to do because the result of leaving the car out there smoking and then eventually blowing up is that a number of cars have had an incident and one guy was upside down and, uh, and that's, you know, they have to understand the consequences of, of running at the front. They, you know, they've earned their slot there, they're doing a great job, but you know, maybe they could be a bit sharper there. Just going back uh, to the start of the race, I think it was your best qualifying uh, position of the season and you thought uh, Takuma Sato might have got a bit of a jump start on you. I think we can see it down here now. Yeah, there's no question that uh, it wasn't that uh, he got a jump on me. He went whilst the lights were still red. Uh, and I almost jumped the start when he moved. So I'm, I'm very, look, you can see there quite clearly um, the, you know, he had a lot of momentum before the lights changed. So I don't know whether the, uh, the jump start system wasn't uh, working properly or whether they just decided to turn a blind eye. But for me, he should have been penalized for that. 
how big an impact was that uh, for you when uh, Giancarlo came flying over the top of you? How scary a moment was that for you individually? No, no for me it's not a problem because the, the rear wing and the, the rear crash structure took the brunt of the impact. Seeing another car going upside down, the last time that happened to me was actually with Martin in, in, uh, sorry, in Melbourne in 96. I saw him disappear rotating upside down and you know it's never a nice moment because you, you fear for the driver and you don't want to be the cause of an injury for them. Just give us your view of what occurred in the dark recesses <laughs> of, of the tunnel. Two big incidents in there. Yeah, for me it's, uh, and I'm sure there'll be lots of opinions, but for me it's quite clear Ralph should either have allowed uh, Alonso to overtake him before they entered the tunnel or after the tunnel. To do what he did, which is kind of half-hearted in the middle of the tunnel, is just, it's crazy. There's one line through there and Alonso was forced wide and he's racing the guy in front, he's got to keep pushing. And he was put in a situation that I think that uh, once he was on the marbles, he was there was no chance for him to come back. And so for me, Ralph was was a little bit naughty there. And uh, the, the Michael situation, clearly he can set the pace because they're still behind the safety car. Quite clearly, he was trying to warm his brakes up. Uh, but as uh, I was talking with Mark before we came on, and and you know the, as you saw with Montoya at the restart with Maricello, he's he's got a lot of experience from America and doing you know, these jumps and the rolling starts and clearly he was just trying to keep as close as he could to Michael. So I'm interested to know what the, the stewards will do on this one. Right. Um, a word for you about your, your, your pal Jensen Button. Mm. Didn't win here, but a terrific charge from him. Yeah, I have to say, I, I was watching the race uh, with, with my girlfriend and uh, Marigold Nui at the end there, and I was so nervous. I don't think I've ever been so nervous because he was catching uh, Yarno and I really thought that it, with that sort of charge, if you could catch him, and have a go straight away, he had a chance to overtake. I know that if he didn't do that straight away, then he was just going to follow him home, but uh, I'm delighted for him. He's driving so well, his confidence is, is sky high at the moment, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him later. Just a, a final word from you about what it means to win here, to, to, to triumph in Monaco. You've had that feeling twice. It's very special for every driver. Yeah, I think that obviously there's only 10 points for this race like any other, but the, uh, the sensation and the, the, the pride that goes with winning here in Monaco it continues for, for um, yeah. many days afterwards and it's a great event and uh, you can see here all the glamour that's attached to, sure. to the event here so it's, it's a big one to win. David, thank you very much indeed. Confirmation of the result from Monaco then. Jarno truly a very emotional, very deserved winner as well. Jensen Button on his tail. Birthday boy Barry Kello, the only driver not to be lapped by those front two. Montoya fourth, Massa fifth from 16th on the grid as well. Damata scoring Toyota's first points despite a drive-through penalty. Heidfeld opens Jordan's account. Panis gets his point despite those horrors at the start. No such problems though for this man. Very many congratulations, Jano. Wokingham now has the Monaco Grand Prix winner in its town. Yeah, I've been filled, you know, on the forest road. And it's true. Uh, I mean, still, uh, as I say, I still have to figure out what I've done. And actually, I'm, I'm very happy. But I don't want to change it. Just a um, little party tonight, but tomorrow back uh, back to work. Because this is this is great. This is the culmination. You've had such a strong season and, and proved, really, that you're, you're a racer of the highest class. I mean, I've gone through a lot of bad luck in the past, and uh, this is the best way to respond to all those people which were not uh, fully convinced of me. On the other hand, you know, I deserve, I think, a pole position. I have deserved a uh, victory. I got it, and now I am much more relaxed. I think we, we had a good strategy, and uh, in the last stint, I was stuck in so much traffic, and I couldn't get past any cars. Um, there was no, not that many blue flags, and they weren't moving out of the way. When I finally did go, get by and get some clear air, the times were good and I knew I could catch him. But um, getting past is another matter around here. But um, I try my best. Fantastic drive. I mean, we were just talking to David Richards earlier on. He was saying, really, it was in the middle of the race that the traffic that, that cost him that win. Yeah, that was unfortunate, but the win's going to come. Um, the team are doing an absolutely stunning job. Wherever we've been all year, they've been on the pace. Fantastic. Juan Pablo, I suspect everybody's going to be talking about that incident for quite some time. Tell us your view of it. Nothing really. It's, uh, he was doing a burnout, I was doing burnout. He accelerated really hard, I accelerated, and he saw the sun, he just turned on the brakes really hard, and I moved to the right to try to avoid him. I came towards where I was, and I, you know, I put the car against the wall so we wouldn't hit, and we just touched. Stood on the brakes harder than you would have expected? Well, he's, you know, if he would brake that hard, he should have, you know, do it in another place, not right in the middle of the tunnel. We had a, we had a lot of fuel left in the car, and um, Michael would have then had a very good sprint until he made his final stop, and I think it might have been possible, depending on how quickly he could have gone. So 
It's very frustrating to, to drop out like that. It is very dark in there. I mean, uh, and the drivers do wear tinted visors. Maybe Montoya just didn't see him. I'm sure he didn't see him, but uh, on that lap, the drivers are getting themselves ready for the start and they need to be prepared for, for everything. So anyway, the stewards will let us know what they think. Fernando, a very unusual incident. Tell us what happened. Yeah, uh, with the Ral was in front of me, he moved to the right into the tunnel. And then when we were uh, side by side, he went in the throttle again until he put me in the outside to the barrier. It's an uh, unusual uh, movement, as you said. So you feel this was an accident directly caused by Ralph? Yes, like uh, most of uh, the accidents that Ralph is involved. There's been some criticism from, from well, David Caulfield in particular, that perhaps BAR should have called you in. It was obvious there was a problem with your engine. If it blew up here, it could have serious consequences. What would your response to that be? And to be honest, on that time, as a driver's point of view, I was racing and do everything I can. And uh, from the team, it was uh, just go and go and go, you know, try a different mixture. Uh, we, we try the best. Um, I, have to see, um, I have to see the engineers and teams, things like that, but uh, it was racing for me. We slowed down a lot. Uh, I was following Montoya. He's gone. Uh, all the guys in front of me are gone, but I don't, underst I don't understand why uh, David was there uh, going... Yeah too slowly. It's not his fault, uh, I, I mean, uh, but it's not even my fault. So the driver's standing, he's still ahead as we head for Germany for the European Grand Prix next weekend. 50 to Michael Schumacher, Barrichello 12 points behind in the second Ferrari. Button third, a point ahead of today's winner, Jano Trulli Montoya. Fifth, Alonso 21 points, a couple of points behind the Colombian. Ralph Schumacher could be going to Toyota as early as this week on 12 points. And Sato started well, race didn't last long though. Ferrari still well clear in the constructors. Barrichello, their only scorer today. Renault in second place. BAR third and Williams in fourth place. The rest are well down. Sauber, McLaren, Toyota, Jordan and Jaguar. Back to back Grand Prix. Then next races, we go to Germany for the European Grand Prix and full coverage throughout the weekend. Jensen Button then ends up so close to scooping the Monte Carlo jackpot. Jarno truly did that but Button's day will come. Good night, you all.